Welcome to Young and Awakening, a podcast for and about spiritually awakening teens. This is episode number seven. I'm Helen Knight, and I am delighted to have with me today Wendy Wagner, founder of Use Your Mind to Heal. So a little bit about Wendy. She's got her PhD. She's a psychologist, hypnotherapist, mindfulness coach, and provides holistic ther therapy services. She works with adults and teens and has over 40 years of experience working in this realm. In her words, she says about teens, as teens navigate the rocky road between childhood and adulthood, they can often feel confused, discouraged, anxious, unloved, and depressed. My therapies provide a safe and non-judgmental environment where both I empathize deeply with the teen and challenge, it, challenge him or her. Some of the most troubled teens are troubled because they do not know how to take responsibility for themselves and their actions. I facilitate life skills, healthy boundaries, and loving relationships while encouraging your teen to take full responsibility for his or her thoughts and actions. The focus on is on teaching your teen how to imagine the consequences of actions in the future. Once this essential skill is learned, a great deal of trouble is avoided. And I imagine there's lots of uh, thriving that, that uh, comes from your work. So Wendy, welcome to our podcast today. Happy to have you here. Thanks, Helen. I'm really happy to be here. It's going to be fun for me to talk about this. Great. Yeah, you've got you're a wealth of of uh, knowledge and experience. So I'm excited to hear what you have to share. So we're going to start out. Just um, can you share a little bit about how you came to do this amazing work you're doing today? I can, and it's it's a little complicated, but um, I got to go back to about 1979, 78, 79, when I started graduate school in California, most cutting edge gra uh, psych graduate school in the country. And at the same time, I was studying with a spiritual teacher mm -hmm. and that really, what really rocked my world was this entire philosophy from the spiritual teacher. And what is challenging for me now, and I've, I've begun to really start really moving into that challenge is, how do I translate that body of material that I learned way back then to a way that teens can really grasp it? Yeah. Because I don't wanna bring God into things right away. I don't wanna bring, um, um, you know, just that, that whole philosophy in a way that they can't really grasp it. Right. So one of the most exciting things for me has been stumbling on a way to, um, to present all of this by saying, okay, it's sort of bringing in the idea of the matrix, which they're all familiar with and saying, really, there are two major dimensions on this planet that we can all see very clearly. There must be many, many more, but there are two that we can see clearly. One is the world of suffering, pain, obstacles, difficulties, you know, really hardship, all of that. The other world is way easier, way kinder, way more loving, way uh, more successful, much more fluid. Now the bridge between these two worlds is thought. Now this is very brand new for teenagers to really, con really contemplate this. And this brings in the whole idea of responsibility because what I've begun to really work with is the philosophy that you create your own reality. Now we're all sort of bantering this around lately, but what does it mean to take it deeply into psychology and deeply into our psyches? Um, so we've got the whole idea of unity consciousness vers versus separation consciousness. And so for teens, I translate that into authentic personality versus uh, programmed personality. And I say, you know, every single one of us is schizophrenic. We both have these two personalities inside of ourselves. <laughs> and I be, yeah, 
And I began to explain to them how it got there and how it all, um, how we all came to this place where for thousands of years, we've been programmed with thoughts that are really not good for our mental health at all. And teenagers are extremely depressed right now. And everything you said, you know, about my introduction on my website is multiplied by about 5,000 million right now. There's right. suicides happening, there's depression, there's anxiety. And I'm gonna go into that a lot more. Um, the other thing I learned way back when was all about the ego. And this, this yeah. needs to be emphasized a great deal more in psychology today. Two things that need to be emphasized more. One is that most psychology today sort of ends with feelings. It's like, yeah, let's get our feelings out. Let's really be aware of our feelings. Let's all of that. But very few people are going beneath feelings to what creates feelings. And that, again, is thought. And um, the ego, if, if, if I wanted to define ego, I could say, okay, first we define spirit or God or, or essence, if you will, yeah. that which wants to lead us towards happiness. Very simple definition. Yeah. If you define the ego, it's that which wants to make sure we never get there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. Really simple. Yeah. The ego is a mistaken identity. It's an identity we've taken on over these thousands of years of programming that says we're weak, we're at an effect of the world, we're, we're being, we're victims, um, there's lack, there's not enough of anything we feel incomplete and something's very wrong with us. That is a basic given with most of us in, in the way we are being raised today. We're raised with an enormous amount of judgment, with enormous amount of criticism, and boy, is it being manifested in our teenagers right now. Yeah. The most saddest, tragic thing to me right now is how little attention is being paid yeah. to the suffering of teenagers right now. Yeah. And where is it all going to lead to if something isn't done in a very, very big way for them? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So it sounds like you've just answered my, my next question, which is like, what's been the driving force behind what you're doing today? Like, I guess my question here, like, why, why your focus, why are, are you so interested in helping the teens is what's behind that? Well, I'm seeing so much suffering that no one's noticing. Okay, let's, let's look at this. Every dysfunction on earth right now is coming down onto the shoulders of our youth in a very big way, from broken homes to terrible education, to the economy being broken, to all these devices that are separating them from themselves and other people, and um, TV's education on their young minds. I mean, if you even look at TV says, if you see somebody you're attracted to at a bar, man, you should have sex with them that night. And it's going to take about 15 seconds at your front door to get undressed and do the deed. You know, it's just like complete miseducation yeah. possible. Love looks like, I mean, what does love look like as portrayed on TV? I mean, it's just totally insane. Our right. education that we're trying to force down these poor children's heads is so boring. And I've been a tutor for many years and I, yeah. I'm just boggled by how boring and, and totally irrelevant the education is. Um, there's no physical education in schools. If public school kids are lucky, they get an hour, maybe two of calisthenics, this is girls, once a week every other semester. Now, right. personally, I went to school and we had three hours of phys ed every single day. Ancient Greece, at the flourishing, the height of their civilization, it was 50% physical education, 50% intellectual. Right. And I mean, it is absolutely criminal what's going on. These kids have no idea what it feels like to feel good in their bodies to feel happy, to feel strong, to feel energetic. So it's absolutely no surprise to me that they go to drugs to have those feelings. It's, right. you know, after, after you burnt yourself out with Coca-Cola, then the next step, I mean, literally, I feel sugar and Coca-Colas and all of those are the gateway drugs. Because once you, you know, you can't get high on them anymore, you go to something that's even better, you know, whatever that might be. And, 
And I think that phys ed, the, the biggest problem is that. And um, there's a terrible hopelessness with our teens right now because part of their education has been, you know, teachers trying to make them aware of our global situation, but maybe too much and too young. I mean, when in fifth grade, they know full well that our earth is on a balance where that we may not make it. Right. What, what, how can they possibly grow up with any kind of hope? So you've got such knowledge around all of this. Again, you're covering so many different aspects. So where do you, so where do your, where does your work come in? How do you support that to help the, the, the change here? Well, the main, the main way is getting them to understand that they are not victims of all of this. Okay. So I'm watching teens who've been locked up with their parents with very poor parenting skills for months on end. And, you know, the depression is just like unbelievable. But when I introduce the idea that, no, you're creating your reality. Now it's a little difficult because they're still victims of their parents and they still have to sort of toe the line. But to give them that little bit of hope that they could actually change things for themselves. They have the power to do so. Yeah. That makes a very, very big difference. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it across the board. It's like, yeah. oh, I can not only make myself happier, but I can also, you know, start really creating change in my environment. Oh, that's beautiful. I got goosebumps. Oh, good. I got goosebumps. And do you do that individually or do you do this in groups? Well, I haven't started doing groups lately, you know, after COVID, but I'm really right. feeling like I'd really like to because I think teens need to get together and start talking about these things amongst themselves and start really right. encouraging one another to like do more mindfulness and things like that. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. To focus more on all of this. Beautiful. And they're excited about it. That's what surprised me when I started yeah. introducing this. It surprised me how much they wanted to eat it up actually. Yeah. I thought I'd find resistance and, oh, I don't know about that, but not at all. No. Well, I think it, they're, it's almost like that, just that you're waving some energy of hope. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So then the, taking it a little further, then, all right. So the first step is learning how to watch your thoughts. This is the single most important skill that any human on the planet needs to learn. Because, I mean, it's like unbelievable how much we're acting from unconscious thinking. Yeah. And so once one begins to watch one's thoughts, then choice is possible. Then yeah. you can choose which reality you want. Right. I had a spiritual teacher who said that every single thought you think is either going to take you to a higher place or a lower place. You have no neutral thoughts. It's impossible to think a neutral thought. So that's the kind of thing I'm trying to teach them. Yeah. And also like recognizing the ego and the damage it causes. Yeah. Like why? How, because they're teens, like um, you've worked with coached adults and you've coached teens. Do the teens feel like that? Do you feel like they get it quicker? And because they've had less programming and less baggage than a 40 year old woman, do they kind of like absorb it just quicker? They're absolutely more willing to try new things. Yeah. And, and I find it incredibly exciting because imagine, I don't know about you, but if someone had told me at the age of 15 that I create my own reality and how to do it, my life would have been so, so different. Yeah. You know, I'm, I feel like I'm handing them power. I'm handing them real tools. Ooh, right. Which is yeah. what I was feeling I was completely missing before I started doing this particular work. It's like, what, what can I really do for these teens? I didn't feel like I had anything. But this gives me a feeling of like, really, I'm giving them huge gifts. And how long ago did you actually start bringing this type of, of uh, counseling in? I think I only started about three years ago, actually. Yeah. 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 Wow. When actually it started for me with adults as well. I was just like, I, I can't do this regular psychotherapy I'm supposed to be doing. It's just not working for me at all anymore. Right. Because it's not hitting the, the seed problem, which is thought. And how we, we hurt ourselves with our own thought. Take, for instance, the whole idea of um, the, the basic seed of the ego, which is the idea that you're lacking something. Right. And so, you know, the, as soon as we go into I'm lacking something, then I've got to go into the world to go get it and make it better. And that means that I'm, you know, 
the whole idea of judgment and hierarchy and better than and less than all of that stuff has to go it's it's killing all of us guilt is killing us also and how how do you work with that with the phone the famous phone because that's where they go for the external validation TikTok, you know, all the social media things. So how do you, how do you, is there a way that you kind of get through to them about that or? Well, you know, they'll sit there and complain about how their parents criticize them and how painful that is. And then I point out how they're criticizing themselves. They've internalized it and they're doing just as much damage to themselves. Right. The devices are difficult, but they really work to my favor. Okay. That teens actually prefer being on Zoom or telephone in therapy. There's that little bit of hiding that they want to do, which right. I'm totally, I'm totally fine with. Right. So that I could work with kids all over the country because they, and then parents don't have to bring them to my my office. Right. Or, you know, blah blah blah. Right. Right. So a little bit. But more I think productive. huge emphasis for me on, you know, yes, you have been raised to look at external reality for your validation and worth. Bring it back. You find your own validation and worth. At least give them the concept so it can yeah. grow inside of them, you know? So it sounds like you're doing a lot of um, seed planting. Yes, a lot. And they're, and they're taking it on and really beginning to watch their thoughts and really seeing how negative the thoughts are and um, how painful. And, and it's like I have a... Um, a client who's got eating disorder and, um, you know, I just said, you know, this is abuse. You're, you're abusing yourself. You wouldn't let a boyfriend do that. And, you know, it stops her cold. And yeah. that's the other thing is, is really pushing the point of not allowing anyone to abuse you. No one, mm, especially yourself. yourself. Uh, yeah. Start there. Right. right. Yeah. Wow, really, and, and your other reference that you said, and I've heard it from another speaker I interviewed was, which is it's a concept I hadn't heard before on, on the, on, uh, until I interviewed the other gentleman, was making the teens aware of the consequences of their actions. Right, oh, that one's really good. Yeah. This is fascinating. Yeah. The sure. actual, the prefrontal cortex, which very few people understand, does not fully develop until age 20, in the 20s somewhere. Wow. So it is, among many things, it is one of the things that develops in your brain to be able to see the consequences of your actions mm -hmm. and also able to not be so, um, um, you know, like hair trigger, you know, just like suddenly do something impulsive, you know? Right. So. What I feel in our educational system is totally lacking, both with parents and teachers, is teaching kids how to do that. In other words, okay, in a very dramatic example, okay, a kid comes to me thinking, you know, I'm pregnant, shall I have the baby? You know, and I go, well, let's look, let's look down that path a little ways. And so I walk with them down a path that they think they want to go. And, and, you know, let's envision it. What's it going to look like in a week, a month, six months, a year? And get them to practice doing that. Wow. Right. Stop. Let's look. And, and then let's explore two paths. Both the one that your mom says and the one that you say. And let's see where these two go, you know? Right. Right. So because they, that's really interesting that you just shared about the, what is it called? The prefrontal? cortex yeah cortex, that it doesn't fully develop until the 20s so if you've got a 14 year old exactly don't, don't really have that concept so is it something that they need just like you work with them and maybe their parents continually lay out the consequences of their actions yeah practice Practice. I say start early. There's two things, I see, three things that I see is not being taught in schools that should be numero uno. Communication skills. Imagine we don't have any. <laughs> two, compassion. And three, looking, you know, consequences of actions, you know. And do I you feel, see, sorry, go ahead. Compassion and empathy. I feel 
maybe this is sexist of me, but from my observation, it feels like girls kind of naturally have an empathy. Boys need to be taught empathy. Yeah. I feel very deeply right from, you know, kindergarten. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I forget what I was going to say to you. Um, okay. Well, fascinating. Um, oh, that was my, that was my question. Do when, 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 let's say again, a 14 year old learns about, you, you teach them about consequences and they start getting it. Do you see that as, that they get better at, at, at um, being aware? Of, yeah, oh sure, yeah. practice yeah. makes perfect. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like no one's telling them to do this. It's amazing, no right. one's teaching them how. And yeah. that is, you know, my other huge worry about teens is they're getting incredibly little attention, incredibly little instruction from parents. I know as a teen, I, no one bothered teaching me anything. They thought school was gonna do the whole thing. And I got pushed out into the world with absolutely no skills whatsoever. Had algebra up the yin yang, but no <laughs> worldly <laughs> skills. Now right. this multiplied significantly even more for teens today. Both parents are working. For whatever reason, it seems like no one's bothering to talk to teens. I mean, I'm appalled how little parents know about what their teens are up to today. Right, right. Wow. Um, yeah. Taking Dude. the time to really sit with them and educate them and, and talk to them. That is the biggest problem is no one's listening, it seems like. Yeah, I've heard that before. That deep listening, you know, right. where, you know, it, it's just amazing. You ask most dads, well, what's your, what's your daughter's birthday? Mm -hmm. Well, what's your daughter's best friend's name? No, no, no. It's like, why did you have children? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. And that whole thing, the teenagers put up this thing that looks like they don't want to be talked to. They're like, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to talk about it. We have to push through that and say, well, we're going to. Yeah. Yeah. And when you do push through, then they. They. Oh. Yeah. And you keep trying. Like I have a, a little 13 year old client. I'll ask her the whole session. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about? Anything else important come up this week? No, no, no. Finally, the last minute. Well, yeah. A guy tried to kiss me this week. <laughs> And it explodes with how much conflict she had around it and how much, you know, but it, it took me 45 minutes to get there. Right, right, right. Yes. And I've interviewed some teens uh, before we started this podcast. And that was something that I heard continuously. I want to be heard. I, I want oh, someone to listen to me. Big, yeah. so yeah. big. They haven't been listened to ever probably in most of their life. Yeah. Most of them. Wow. Now you compound this with drugs and tr the drug problem, you know, sixth grade, I, I had a teenager tell me this sixth grade, they, they had an OD in their class. Somebody had given marijuana edibles to, to the kids in the class and they were taking her to the hospital. Wow. Grade. I, and when I was in Hawaii, by sixth grade, they were trying methamphetamines. That's wow. how desperate the situation is. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. And there's no real education around that either from people yeah. who, are, who aren't just like, no to drugs, marijuana is bad. You know, they put it right, everything right up with heroin, you know, and so it's meaningless to them. Yeah. Right. 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 Wow. We got our work cut out for us. We do. And if, unless we do the work, who's, who's going to run the country? Who's okay. going to run anything? Yeah. You know, these teens are so confused and their values are so far. They, they don't have values. They're just like, I don't, they don't know which end is up. Right. There's no foundation anywhere. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So You've, you've answered in many ways my next question, but you might add to it. So my, my next one is, what do you feel that teens in this time of such transformation and awakening really need to help them thrive? So maybe some ones that have a more supportive family 
um, and the ones that are, I don't know if you're seeing it in your practice, um, but I've seen it, witnessed it with some of the teens I've worked with. These kids are, some of them are really awake, right? Oh, They're old souls coming in. I really wanted to address that because that's the underlying thing I'm also seeing. We've got some amazingly conscious beings on this yeah. planet right now and powerful. Yes. And they are not afraid to speak up at all. They're going to change the world. They're going to be as powerful a group if they get, if they get help as, as say we were in the sixties, you know, as far as changing people's viewpoints, because certainly what they're doing with sexuality and, you know, the border line between male and female is getting like huge and they're not afraid to talk about it and they're not embarrassed and they're not shy. They're really like, I'd say the teens that I've been working with have got a consciousness that I began to have in my thirties. Right. So they're way, are right. you seeing that too? Yeah. 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 I was going to say. So that's there's what... also huge promise. So thank you for bringing yes. that up. Yeah. I'm painting such a dark picture, but there's also the willingness to, uh -huh. to really explore and to look at new levels of consciousness. I think the media in a way has programmed them beautifully for seeing, you know, more expanded consciousness. But as far as, you know, what else they need, I think their education is like really, really important. But also, you know, the whole idea of taking responsibility for their actions is gigantic learning to watch their thoughts, you know, realizing that thought is really, really important and has enormous power. Um, all of those things that they're not victims, that they have the power to change things. I think that's the single most empowering thing we could do for our teens right now, because the world seems so threatening in so many ways. You look at how it's like right now, I, when I was growing up, getting a college degree was helpful. It did. It promised to get me a better job, and it did. Right. It's not helping anybody right now, I don't think, is from right. what I can see. Right. You'd have to go right. to graduate school to get any kind of more income or anything out of the deal. So it, college isn't very relevant right now for these teens. They need, we need a lot more vocational training. Yeah. And real, you know, hands-on training. Yeah, it's relevant to. And the ones that are like, you can definitely feel that they're, they're awake. They're again, a higher level of consciousness. Uh, again, to, to me, they're, they're old souls that have decided yeah. they're, they're coming yeah. in to help with this huge transformation awakening that right. uh, planet Earth, we humans are going through. Right. Um, do you find, again, I don't know how many you work with, but do you find that they're, they take to it a little bit more uh, quickly or is there uh, maybe it's a, a sense of permission that they need permission and like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. I believe in you. Um, I don't know. Is there anything that you. That's it. That's you're No, you're really, you're really touching on all of it. It's like listening to them begins a huge change right there and going, wow, it must be hard with your parents right now, you know, really colluding with how difficult things are for them. Right. Because, you know, I, I heard so much during COVID, you know, teens went through horrendous stuff. I mean, there were so many more pregnancies. There were so many more suicides. Yet parents were like, uh, it's okay. You know, whereas I, I was like, yeah, you're going through one of the most challenging periods of your life. And here are the good points of it. That's the other part of my, my, um, my, tr my spiritual training is this one statement. Everything that comes to you is for your benefit. Yeah. Now take yeah. that and let's look at everything from that point of view. How is this helping you? And teaching kids also mm -hmm. how to do that. Right. Right. Take yeah. Because it gets them out of victimhood. Exactly. And this is, yeah. But, um, you know, people not recognizing how much pain they were going through because here's their big, all right, here's a 13 year old who's transforming completely into a woman, making massive changes inside her body. No one's recognizing it, no ceremony around it. Then on top of that, there's COVID. And 
I mean, it's just overwhelming what these kids must be feeling inside. And they, here's this stage in their life where they so want to be social and get out there and have boyfriends and parties and none of it, none. Right, right, right. Very crazy making for them. Are you seeing a shift now that things are more opened up and they're going back to school in a couple of weeks? Yeah, the shift is to kind of more confusion. It was like things were settling for them during COVID and things oh, were less complicated. Yeah. Now, suddenly, oh my God, they do have boyfriends. They are socializing, they are taking drugs again. You know, so it's like, it's getting very complicated. So now it's like sort of the rubber meets the road type of thing. Now they get to try on some of the things I've been suggesting at right. a deeper level. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so there are teens listening to our podcast. Um, is there a special message that you have for them? Is there anything you really want to, again, you've already shared a lot, but yeah. is there anything that Yeah. Well, I think just to repeat, you know, just taking responsibility for their own lives. Yeah. It's a tricky time in their life because for, they've been told what to do for 15, 16 years. Um, I've got a, a teen who's 17 and now has to face making her own decisions for the first time. She's absolutely terrified. And I think, again, that's a very important stage that we're not giving nearly enough attention to. Do you remember back when you suddenly had to take responsibility for your own life? Yeah. How terrifying that was? Right, right. And for me, college mitigated that in a way. It was like, okay, channel me right into another school right. and, and I won't have to think about it. Yes. But, you know, even now, but that's not good enough for kids today. They're like, really like of the, what shall I do? Given that I've got a choice between college and McDonald's. Wow. Really? Right. There's not much in between for, you know, you want to continue working at gas stations the rest of your life, or do you want to really, you know, do things that are more, way more satisfying for yourself? Yeah. So the, the mindfulness thing, I think, is, you know, hugely important. Yeah. yeah. Watching your thoughts and then realizing you have a choice what you think and yeah. learning the discipline of how to do that. There's another whole ball game altogether. Right. For right. all of us, right? Right. All of us. Yes. Yeah. And I always say that even to my adult, my, my more adult clients, but this is happening for you, not to you. Right. That's that. That's great. I'll use that. That's really a good yeah, one. This is right. for you. And I say it to myself when there's something challenging, like, okay, breathe through it. This is happening for you. Okay. There's a lesson here. There's a gift here. There's, there's something here for that. Um, who knows when I'm going to learn it, but it could be now. It could be in, in six months time when I look back. Exactly. Always knowing it's happening for me, not to me. Right. It's one of the greatest gifts of old age is beginning to see that so clearly with yeah. every incident you thought oh no poor me you go oh wow thank god that happened yeah yeah it's amazing it's exactly. really amazing yeah so i have one more question before you wrap up that's just come to me again because you work with teens you've got this wonderful experience years and years of experience people that want to support teens maybe they're hearing your message and they're like oh my god like i i like teens how could what, where do you, like, someone who's, who's intrigued, do you have any, any guidance along how they could support teens? It's a big question, but anything? Oh, just talking to them. Talking and to them. Not listening. talking at them, which is what most adults do. It's sad. Sit down and have a chat with a teen and the adult, never, never pause, you know? Right, okay. Yeah, listen. listen to them. And that's listen such a job that creates trust right there. And then just being there for them, letting them know you're there for them non judgmentally. And that's yeah. the biggest piece because the, all the problems on the earth right now, obviously, as you know, is caused by judgment. Yeah. Somebody's better than you, less than you, you know, just mm. ending all of that right. hierarchical garbage. And, you know, really speaking to their sense of unworthiness mm. that, you know, has been implanted by those, those oh. programs, yeah. you know, and 
Yep. Yep. So listening, listening to teens. And I'm also getting that again, if someone's called to then work with teens in some way, like go from that listening and hearing what they're saying and then branch out into a way that, that, that can support teens because yeah, I, I, that as I started this podcast, I just was astounded. As you say, there's not much out there for the teens, not much out. So that's why we're yeah. here. We want to support the teens and um, help for a brighter, a brighter future. Yeah, I'm so yeah. glad you're doing this. Thank God someone's, you know, aware of what's going on. I really, I'm really appreciating that you're doing this for yeah. sure. Yeah. Because they're bright, those guys. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. They just need the <laughs> awesome. tools, right? Yeah. We want to give them the tools to then thrive mm -hmm. and go yeah. with, with, the, with, the, with the magic and the light they have within. Yeah. Give them tears. Spirit tears yeah. are coming. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So um, is there anything else you want to share with our audience before we wrap up? Um. I don't, I think we've, um, I think we've, we've um, touched most of it, actually. I wish I'd gone a little slower and gone into more detail, but I think we got the essence Yeah. Um, no. right now. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. And if, when people hear this message, where can they find you to, um, if they want to reach out to you to learn more about what you do? Well, there's my website, which is, you, you can find me under wendyewagner.com. E has to be in there, or my telephone is 808-557-1299, 808-557-1299, and I can work with kids all over the country, that's if they want to do Zoom or something, and I, and I, this is my, pa my latest passion, I'm really enjoying this work, I'm learning tremendous, tremendous amounts from the teens, too, beautiful, so, yeah, and, and finding out what's the most toxic parts of their lives. And I guess I'm hearing TikTok really is like phenomenally dark and negative. Now, not only that, but I'm also hearing that that's beginning to change. I'm watching, I'm discussing different TV shows with kids and they talk about how negative some of the cartoons are. And then they talk about something like um, sex education. Have you seen that, the Netflix show, Sex Education? No. Mind-blowing totally truthful, totally real, totally clear about sex, and yet positive and uplifting. They're, sh they're beginning to do TV shows where they're showing people helping one another, being kind to one another. There's a big value yes. shift starting to happen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Okay, so well, we're on TikTok too. Matilda's doing a few um, guided meditations over there. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. So she's, she's over there. I'm not, I'm not ready to go there. I've got enough on my plate, but we we're over on TikTok as well. Okay, so, good. Yeah. It needs it over there. It sounds like. Yeah. Beautiful. Wendy, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Helen. Yeah. More soon. We'll talk, we'll talk yeah. more about how we can collaborate maybe. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Take care. Oh, bye. Bye.